caring as a phrase itself carries with it positive connotations and thoughts of humanitarian aid or neighborly activities and generosity. It is an aspect of personal and social life that is almost ubiquitously important. When the phrase is attached to the profession of caring, it becomes even more significant. Since the foundation of nursing as a professional practice, caring has been an integral part of the work. Nursing calls up images of individuals like Florence Nightingale, um, and um, they are all generous and caring spirits. All of this is to say that caring is the very foundation of nursing as a profession and a practice. There will be some that will even call caring an art form, contending that it is the distinguishing quality that works to set nursing apart from other professionals. And I'm citing here um, um, an article published by Waters in 2009. It is clear that care is an integral part of nursing as a profession and the practice. Like Waters said, it is the glue that brings the patient to us. Care, when properly implemented by a nurse, is exactly what makes nursing such a unique and necessary part of the healthcare system. Please take a moment to stop this presentation and review the objectives for this chapter as listed on this slide. So, what is in fact caring? Caring is a difficult subject to define as it's the feeling which exhibit concern, empathy in satisfying the physical, psychological, spiritual, cultural, social, and emotional needs. This can be achieved by being compassionate, loving, kind, warm, sensitive, sympathetic, responsive, and considerate to others. So in our textbook, it is stated that caring means responding to others as unique individuals, sensing their emotions and accepting them as they are, and this will be unconditional. Caring makes a connection with another human being. We practice holistic nurses that is also called transpersonal nursing, caring for the whole person, their mind, their body and spirit. We are going back to Dr. Jean Watson, and um, Watson in 1997 um, stated that the core of the theory of caring is that humans cannot be treated as objects and that humans cannot be separated from self, other, nature, and the larger workforce. Dr. Watson's theory encompasses the whole world of nursing, in fact, with the emphasis placed on the interpersonal process between the caregiver and the care recipient. The theory is focused on the centrality of human caring and on the caring to caring transpersonal relationship and its healing potential for both the one who is caring and the one who is being cared for. The structure for the science of caring is built upon 10 important factors. Dr. Jean Watson uses the term curative instead of curative to distinguish between nursing and medicine, whereas curative factors aim at curing the patient of disease, curative, which is comes from the uh, root care factors, the curative factors will aim at the caring process that helps the person attain or maintain, in other cases, health, or in some extreme situation, die a peaceful death. What will be those um, uh, elements, those factors. There will be embrace, having an altruistic value and practice loving kindness with self and others. Inspire, faith and hope and honors to the others. Trust, trust self and others by nurturing individual beliefs, personal growth and practices. Nurture, by helping, trusting, caring relationships. Forgive and accept positive as well as negative feelings. Authentically listen to another's stories. Deepen. Have a scientific problem-solving method for caring decision-making. Balance. Balance teaching and learning to address the individual needs. Have readiness 
and develop learning styles. Co-create. Co-create a healing environment for both the physical and spiritual self with respect for human dignity. Minister. Minister to basic physical, emotional, and spiritual human needs. And open. Be open to mystery and allow miracles to enter. So, Dr. Jean Watson calls for a balance between high-tech and high-touch in the environment and summons the nurses to be, and I quote now, a scientist, a scholar and clinician, but also a humanitarian and moral agent. That agent that utilizes his or her person to transform the environment into one in which healing can occur. Watson's caring theory explains, describes, guides, and support nursing practice. It gives language to the previously unspoken beliefs and perspectives of the nursing profession so that nursing professionals could better envision, realize, and articulate their unique role in healthcare. Nurses need to respect and support the religious or spiritual needs of the patients because that is caring for the spirit. And this is an integral aspect of transpersonal caring. If you are a caring person, you accept people unconditionally. That means you accept people's needs and behaviors as being real for them. You do not have to convert to a certain um, religion as Judaism, Islam, or Christianity to become a caring nurse. But it's essential, on the other hand, that you respect those beliefs in others. This slide is giving you some examples of transpersonal care. Think of others you have seen done by people around you. What have you done before that demonstrated care? Transpersonal caring is the caring you give to another person, to a stranger, because you both are human and your lives have crossed paths. This type of caring is seen by philosophers as a human trait or as a moral imperative. Now, what about that irritating person in class who talks too much or knock your book off your desk and then didn't apologize or pick them up? Do these people deserve your transpersonal caring? Well, yes, they do. Because they are human beings and true caring does not discriminate based on race or religion, based on age or behaviors or any other characteristics. We all should begin by trying to treat our fellow students in a caring manner. We do not have to agree with them or even like them, but they should all be listened to, not interrupted, and their opinions and ideas should be respected. Characteristics of a caring nurse include respecting everyone, assessing the entire person, the body, the mind, and the spirit. Use their names not the bed numbers, or don't call them honey or mama. According to Roach, caring is manifested through six C's, compassion, competence, confidence, conscious, commitment, and comportment. Interviewers can be trained through Role-playing and scripting using Roach's caring model. Compassion is expressed by being sensitive to the anxiety and apprehension they may feel toward receiving a call from a stranger who is asking about health-related issues. Competence is expressed by being able to give the participant the information they need to have an understanding as to what they are consenting. Confidence. Well, confidence is achieved by ensuring the participant that the information they share will be used appropriately and for the greater good. Conscious. Conscience is expressed by following ethical research protocols, adhering to confidentiality and respecting the relationship with the research participant. Finally, interviewers manifest caring through comportment by identifying themselves by their name, credentials, and institution addressing the participant formally using language the participant can understand and projecting caring throughout their tone of voice. A need to care for others is what called you into the profession 
and it's what will sustain you through the joys, conflicts, and challenges you will experience. And I quote Sister Simone Roach. There are still nurses who are unkind to each other. The phrase nurses eat their young not get started because every nurse is caring. There are also nurses who pride themselves on their scientific knowledge, the high-tech nurses that have not developed their high-touch side. And as much as I don't like to admit it, there are some nurses that just don't seem to care. Fortunately, there are many more who are both caring and compassionate. As you read about the efficient approach to Mrs. Lopez's care and the caring approach, notice that the care that accomplishes the same thing as the efficient approach, but did more as well. In, in, in my experience, the caring approach does not take any more time or effort and will also make you feel better. Let's look into caring for families and significant others. Well, when you act holistically and practice caring, that will include all family and significant others as well. It will enhance the healing process. And this doesn't stop just with your patients. Healing may mean in some situation helping family after the death of a loved one. Meeting the challenges um, of holistic nursing care is what makes nursing a profession. In fact, you must work through any negative feelings you have about a person or group of people. You must give everyone the same level of care that you would give your own loved ones. Being a nurse is not easy. It's very difficult, in fact. It's demanding and challenging. And Dr. Watson contends that caring regenerates life energies and potentiates our capabilities. The benefits are immeasurable and promote self-actualization of both the personal and professional level. Caring is a mutually beneficial experience for both the patient and the nurse, as well as between all health team members. In addition, it is important to remember that Dr. Watson emphasizes that we must care for ourselves before and in order to be able to care for others. Self-healing is a necessary process for rejuvenating our energy reserves and replenishing our spiritual bank. The critical concept of there is a reason for every behavior requires each of us to understand human nature and ourselves. By understanding motivation, you will see that there is a reason for every behavior and you will look for that reason behind actions rather than just being confused or judgmental. 